The atrocities in China, meanwhile, seem never-ending, just as UNHRC chief is all set to visit China. More shocking visuals are emerging from Beijing of a draconian lockdown. People being locked in their homes with no food, being forced to get tested. Some even fleeing their homes in a desperate attempt to find freedom from the inhuman treatment being meted out to them. This comes after Shanghai, where we earlier saw visuals of people being locked in their homes. Covid officers barging into people's homes, beating them up, indiscriminately arresting them, slaughtering pets, separating children from their parents. There is really, uh, it seems, no bounds to what China will do to defend its so-called zero Covid policy. So why is the world not talking about this? Where is the UNHRC? Where is the WHO? Where are human rights reports? And will the global community turn a blind eye to this blatant violation of human rights? Well, before we uh, throw this uh, open to our guests on the broadcast, let's in fact uh, quickly show you uh, some visuals that are in fact uh, coming in from Beijing in China, which will show you about what really is transpiring uh, in this city, which is of course being criticized the world over which is showing you some of the inhuman uh, sort of, uh, you know, developments taking place in uh, the country. Well, these, of course, are uh, visuals, as you can see, uh, coming in from Beijing in China of, of course, draconian measures uh, being undertaken there. You can uh, clearly, of course, see how residents are leaving districts which are uh, on the verge of lockdown. So these of course are uh, residents trying to flee uh, from those districts which are being uh, put in these uh, brutal lockdowns. You can see the kind of traffic jams there as people try and run away, try and flee uh, from these districts. There are also other residents who are attempting to flee. You saw of course cars. Now you can see people walking away on foot, running away some of them and uh, walking away literally of course hordes of people as you can clearly see. Uh, trying to flee, trying to escape from these lockdowns. People, uh, of course, who are locked inside their homes are uh, suffering there. You can see, of course, there are these doctors who barge in, try and forcefully test, uh, take, uh, you know, draconian measures there. You can, of course, see these are the situations, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the of course, uh, the scenarios on ground as China continues to grapple with this very, very uh, difficult lockdown. So these, of course, are uh, some of the developments uh, continuing uh, on the broadcast. We will, of course, uh, get you more visuals in just a short bit. But let me uh, quickly, in fact, uh, also uh, get in uh, at this point some guests joining us on the broadcast. Dr. Sanjeev Chobe uh, is live with us, MD and Head of International Department in Internal Medicine, Suntech Hospital, Shanghai, China. We also have Ambassador Bashwati Mukherjee, former diplomat, joining us live. Dr. Sanjeev Bagai, Chairman Nephron Clinic, is joining us live. Manoj Panigrehi, South Asia expert, is also joining us live. Dr. Ishwar Gilada, Infectious Disease Specialist and Health Analyst, also joins us live. Uh, let me uh, begin with Dr. Chobe, though, about uh, what the situation there is, since you are joining us at this point from Shanghai. Uh, what is the scenario in Shanghai, now in Beijing, where these draconian lockdowns are continuing, is anything being achieved from all of this, apart from uh, torturing of the citizens? Uh, right now in Shanghai, it is uh, still a lockdown, but uh, the, the lockdown was imposed. Thoda saab, ke agar mujhe un Hello. Yeah, the, the lockdown was imposed in Shanghai uh, in March. And uh, right now, we already locked down uh, more than, it is more than 50 days. And as you show, it's true that uh, we are in the compound lockdown and regular testing and tracing is uh, ongoing. And every day we are monitoring the number of cases. But now in Shanghai, there are slowly, uh, they are actually partially, they are trying to open the mall and see um, whether the cases are increasing or not. So this testing and trial method uh, will continue for 15 days. Uh, I think it's mid of June or by end of the June, probably uh, the lockdown will be revoked, revoked from the uh, Shanghai. So still, but uh, there are 46 uh, cities in China having uh, partial on and off lockdown. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Chobe, but you know, the big question, of course, is, is anything being achieved by these uh, lockdowns? 
you know, this is of course the zero COVID policy that China is talking about, but is anything being achieved by these torturous measures, these draconian measures? And how are the citizens reacting to it on ground since you're seeing people around you, since you're interacting with people there? How are citizens reacting? Because there is very frightening videos coming of residents screaming as they are locked up, of people f running away, uh, of being separated from babies, pets being taken away. What are people on ground saying? And what is this achieving? See, the lockdown is basically, uh, yes, we are achieving that uh, they have uh, tried to control the cases. And by do, put, doing this one, by doing lockdown, uh, definitely they are able to focus the hot spots. Plus, uh, the, the picture which you are saying that uh, the people are getting panic and uh, that's very, uh, very uh, normal and uh, human nature that uh, the life was very normal for the last two years. And suddenly this outbreak uh, started and uh, government get alerted. So definitely uh, the, the, the mood of the people are in the beginning because the people are here used to a more disciplined life. So some of them in the beginning, of course, they have a very aggressive nature. But uh, right now, of, means it was just few week, just few days after the lockdown. The people having a difficulty, especially in the uh, getting the the daily routine uh, stuff like vegetables and all. But uh, later on, the government has has managed to provide uh, vegetables and all the necessary necessary thing which you require to um, sustain or live in the compound. So, as if now the the provocation like the aggression is not so strong uh, as it was in the beginning. Okay, uh, let me uh, quickly uh, rope in the, our other guests as well at this point. Ambassador uh, Bhashwati Mukherjee is of course joining us. Ambassador Bhashwati Mukherjee, the big question of course is, you know, when will the UNHRC wake up? When will countries wake up and call out China for this, uh, you know, blatant human rights violation, such torture of their citizens? is certainly not called for and uh, is not in fact being uh, appreciated by any sort of medical experts as well. Well, first of all, uh, Uday, the very reticence of our Indian colleague in Shanghai uh, demonstrates that it is extremely dangerous to be in China and to be even slightly critical of Chinese government policy. So I have my sympathy uh, that he could not respond to your question fully. Let me try and respond to it, but I'm not a physician. I cannot comment on China's zero COVID policy, but I can certainly comment on its implications for the human rights of those who are in China, including foreigners, not just Chinese citizens, and China's commitment to international human rights law as a permanent member of the Security Council and having ratified various international covenants. They are completely are not, if they are not permitted to drag innocent citizens away from their homes, slaughter their pet dogs, or to behave as if there is no rule of law in China. Even when you have a pandemic, kindly consider the way the Indian government handled it. We had very draconian restrictions here also there, you would recall, we were in Delhi together. But it was done in a, in a humane way through continuously explaining to the citizens etc. And there was there was continuous interaction at the highest level between our government and our people. This is certainly not the case here, where you have COVID inspectors going in and dragging people away, social media which is controlled, but still very critical. So yes, this is something that countries that object to this kind of behavior, including India, should get first of all, non governmental organizations to protest to the Human Rights Council and then if necessary to call China to explain as a member of the Human Rights Council how this kind of behavior that we do not want to comment on the zero COVID policy that is for my medical colleagues here to comment upon but whatever the reason for zero COVID policy whether it's rational or not they have no right to treat their citizens as if and foreigners who are there, by the way, because of foreigners also locked up, as if they have no rights at all, as if the state is like the imperial Chinese state of the Manchu dynasty, and that the Chinese head of state is the Manchu emperor who is laying down the law for his poor people.
that is completely unacceptable and as far as indians are concerned we are certainly not used to seeing uh, this kind of behavior which indicates that there is no democracy at all in china no respect for human rights it's an autocratic authoritarian state and it needs to be condemned in every fora of the un where it can be raised for that Yes, so let me in fact uh, get in uh, our, our medical experts then, uh, as, as you said, to comment on that uh, zero COVID policy. Dr. Bagai, uh, uh, come in here. Has this, uh, have these draconian measures led to any success of that zero COVID policy? And are you shocked that, uh, you know, despite the outrage, these uh, measures continue in city after city? First Shanghai, now Beijing. Good afternoon, everyone. So I think China leaves no opportunity to continue to embarrass itself. Uh, I think they've been global criminals. They've been called out uh, n amount of times in various uh, social, political, and medical platforms. Uh, they've been global pariahs. They've been uh, opaque and a closed society. They've been masters of misinformation and manipulation, which has now become pervasive, not only to the outside world, but even to their own citizens. Uh, a country which follows no international norms, right from the beginning, the zero patient, the first person who was a whistleblower, they all just vanished or died, uh, or so they say. Uh, there has been no correct factual information or data which has come out from that large country of China being the propagator and the originator of this COVID infection. But I guess this is law of karma. What goes around comes around. Uh, now, coming to uh, their, their issues of human rights, they have no human rights. They have no common sense. Uh, they have no decent uh, behavior towards human beings, uh, whether you call it... Uh, uh, whether you call it their authoritarian attitude towards uh, crime against humanity to the Ungers, to the Turkic Muslims and so on. Uh, there have been mass arbitrary detentions, tortures, enforced disappearance. Uh, and it just disobeys every aspect of being just a simple human being. Uh, with regards uh, the medical aspects, there are two quick points which I want to make. I think this once again shows uh, how pathetic and how unscientific their vaccines have been. I just will take 30 seconds to dwell into this. To begin with, it was just about reaching 50% vaccine efficacy. I want everyone to understand vaccine efficacy and vaccine effectiveness are two different aspects. But on ground in the real world, world data, the vaccine effectiveness dipped down to 30%. Unfortunately, the Omicron has stripped open their, their completely uh, uh, distilled water uh, injections even more in which now the vaccine efficacy and effectiveness has dipped to 18% in most international studies. So the Chinese vaccines have not worked, neither for the citizens nor for the countries which they tended to or pretended to supply to. So what has really happened is that Omicron is now having one of the largest vaccine and immune escapes mechanisms. I will not waste time going into the medical details of the amino acid substitutions, deletions, and how super antigens are being formed in this Omicron, which just has made redundant most of the vaccines world over. But the fact is that in your third year, now going on forward, after the fourth or the fifth wave in most countries, any lockdown is unscientific, regressive, and totally terrible. A lockdown is in the initial part of a pandemic only to establish government policies, public preparedness, and to get your genetic work ready to have a vaccine rollout. India did this beautifully well within the first six months of having a lockdown, and we were well on the roll of a vaccine campaign, which has actually not only saved, I would say, a million Indian lives, but maybe more than 100 million lives worldwide. But to have a lockdown at this stage of a pandemic, where most countries are now giving their fourth vaccine forward, this is unscientific, uncalled for, unwarranted, did not work in the second wave, will not work in the third, fourth, and fifth wave, definitely not in the third year. So I think China needs a complete relook at what they are doing medically, socially, politically, and in terms of science. If they need some help, I don't know which country will come forward for them. To be called a Chinese is actually a curse in the society these days. Over to you. Yes, uh, let me also uh, quickly, of course, uh, rope in Dr. Gilada as well at this point. Uh, Dr. Gilada, on, uh, on these measures, uh, on whether you believe the UNHRC, WHO should crack down, uh, should some countries finally tell China that this is not right, uh, given the fact that their citizens aren't allowed the freedom to do that, um, what do you believe should happen? And 
is this medically yielding any sort of success see china's uh, zero covid policy is flawed internationally nobody has appreciated that probably china is feeling encouraged after uh, uh, no cases in shanghai for last one week and they thought that by testing everybody three times in shanghai uh, they could control covid now actually speaking uh, when you want to have a staggered opening it is the best time to open up because omicron just give you infection doesn't give you hospitalization and lot of uh, people are not dying so in china itself there are only three deaths uh, three deaths uh, in last uh, one day and uh, only 14 deaths in a week's time so in such a situation where china's uh, number one population in the world but number 110 in covid cases now your your question why who is not coming in we don't expect who to come in who should have come in when the uh, china gave uh, virus to uh, all over the world who till today has not told it is vaccine virus has originated from uh, one in what manner whether it was a biological warfare whether it was a, a some kind of accidental mechanism which by which uh, came out so despite three committees who has not come out openly so what do you expect that who will come in for their zero covid policy no not at all so i don't think you and hrc or who will come in china is terrible uh, no one can uh, say any anything better about china whether because of their current policy or what they have given to the world so i think uh, in such a situation best of luck to china if they need any support from india we can provide their vaccine is useless they can take indian vaccine and save their people and that is the re- uh, real situation okay uh, let me also get in manoj panigrahi at this point as well manoj panigrahi uh you know people in china of course are fed up uh, uh these inhumane policies continue but what's very strange of course is that no one seems to be lecturing them no one seems to be questioning them well uh thanks uh then also i would like to echo what our fellow panelists uh just mentioned about um that human rights is something that is not uh, synonym to the uh, cpc uh Chinese Communist Party, and as we can see that uh, since the beginning, Li Wenliang, who kind of um, loosened out the about the COVID virus, um, that thing he disappeared, as was mentioned earlier, he disappeared, right? And the same goes the influence of the Chinese in the United Nations. If we compare, I if we have some data, that's if we compare the Chinese uh, funding share in United Nations in 2000, it was only two percent. but if we compare to as of to this year in 2022 it is about 15.25% and this is a big number of uh, money that uh, the chinese are sharing to it and of and we have seen this evidence when the virus was initially named as a wuhan virus but it got changed into covid-19 so it can it shows the amount of um, influence that the chinese have in the in, in united nation that is the the premier in international organizations of the world and at the same time uh, when uh, if i there are three countries or the three places where i would say uh, there are zero covid policy as of now as it one is china second is hong kong and third is taiwan and over the years uh, and sorry over the years uh, as well we have seen as of now in taiwan even though there is uh, cases which did exceptionally well in uh, in the first two years it is having a daily cases of 80 86000 uh, per, per day so but they are not doing that a level of lockdown uh, it's, it's has this kind of democratic situation uh, where they have to take care of other things and how this covid in chinese uh, china is also affecting is also affecting the sur- global supply chains that uh, around the world and we already have chip shortage and uh, i'm sure in definitely if such uh, lockdowns do continue in shanghai beijing or other cities in china uh, we will be facing uh, mo- much more harder times in future because uh, the world factory is that is based out in china is under lockdown so yes we will be seeing a more uh, stronger and also there is a uh another concept in chinese that's the mian sir uh, that's in chinese they call it saving face and the ccp i definitely don't want to lose face uh, of uh, go- that it is losing its policy that of zero covid so we will be seeing some extended um, lockdowns and we'll be seeing extended lockdowns in different cities uh t- maybe in phases uh but definitely it's not going uh, a- anywhere as of now yes dr chobe 
you, you've heard what uh, you know the guests uh, in India have to say. How do you respond to them? Uh, and yeah. you know, and do you believe a relook is needed? <clears throat> yeah, actually, I hear all of, all of them, and I have a little bit uh, different uh, way of approach. Uh, if you know that uh, this virus was started, actually, if you see that this virus started <clears throat> since September 2019, and uh, the pandemic was declared in March 2020 by WHO. So after that, we have one phase of virus, which was Wuhan virus, which was no name that time. And later on, they have chosen the Latin American name like that, then Delta came. The Delta came. There was also a mismanage uh, all over the world, not only in India. It's also you have seen the Brazil and the US and still, still the US having the same problem. They're having uh, but the herd immunity somewhere, the vaccination and the government effort has been taken. And finally, they now know how to live with the virus. In the last two years of the uh, last 2020 20, uh, to 22, there was a no any outbreak of uh, Delta or uh, any uh, Omicron XE or any Omicron or Omicron XE or even the previous one. So the two two years of time, the life, the life in the Shanghai or the whole in the China, even though it was a lockdown for China, they're not issuing any visa, but there is no such mass event or uh, outbreak like it happened as if now that uh, we are facing. Even though the Chinese people, the Chinese doctors and the CDC, Chinese um, uh, the group, they know also this Omicron is not so de deadly like the previous one. So, but since they never been exposed, the whole country has been never been exposed to this virus. So they don't have the immunity. Regarding the, uh, we are talking about the virus uh, vaccine. In the vaccination, if you see somewhere there is a, of course, the people having here is a mild symptoms, but it is highly contagious. It is spread six times faster than the other uh, virus. And if you see the vaccination rate, so I've seen that 89%, 87% has been given in the up to the age of 60 to 69%, uh, 60, up to the 60 to 69 year of age of people. And uh, 70 plus, they have also received around 82, 86% uh, second dose. Third dose is still in the low. And in 80 years and above, they have a third dose, almost 20%. So looking at the concept, and the two, and if you're talking about the, uh, like our other colleague was mentioning that we should learn from India and all other country. I would like to say that uh, there are two different uh, government system we are talking about. In India also there was a democracy and you have seen that the people started running from the Punjab to Bihar and UP and they have become impatient when the lockdown was imposed. And the similar, similar thing is happening over here because uh, it's a human nature that we have to understand and accept. Since uh, we are talking about the WHO role or the other uh, human rights and other things, definitely I can say that the, here the people having a more understanding, those, there are always a, some, in, some people who are impatient. Majority of the patient in my society, even when they imposed the lockdown from the 1st April, only the first two, three, four days, people has protested and then they make it, they said that we will provide everything just you have to stay here. Salary, they will pay you for three months. No, no company will kick you out during the lockdown period. So aside from that, they have given the other privileges. So they can, they can continue with all the facility whatever the facility they can uh, providing in Shanghai, they can continue this lockdown even for more number of months, as long as they are not, uh, the, they are getting money, they are, they are getting the food supply, or they are getting the, yes, time to time they open, the, before that it was complete lock, com, apartment lockdown, now it's compound lockdown, today they have opened, you can go to the nearby supermarket and buy your necessary things, so probably expecting. So it's whenever the, you impose the new things, there is always a reper, uh, repercussion. There always uh, there is a reaction and action. So okay. I do think so. Uh, making a very harsh comment on this matter is uh, means beneficial or right. Okay. For more such videos.
subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.